Welcome to the Modern Manifestation Podcast. I'm your host, Bree Brown, a business mindset coach, entrepreneur, and a top competitor in a male-dominated industry. I'm a native Texan, the youngest of all brothers, and a lettuce-hating, wine-loving, curses-like-a-sailor recovering perfectionist. I've spent over a decade building my commission-based career, and my life's purpose is helping other women achieve the same multi-six-figure success I achieved before I was 25. I have a passion for helping women with mindset, money, and manifestation skills to help every young woman realize her full potential. If you're looking for vulnerable conversations, professional development, inspiration, or even a kick in the ass to get you motivated, you have come to the right place. Thanks for checking out the Modern Manifestation Podcast. Now let's jump right in to today's topic. Hello, hello, my beautiful souls. I hope you all are having a fantastic week. I cannot believe that by the time this podcast interview goes live, it is going to be April. That just blows my mind. And on that subject, that means that this podcast is officially almost, well, I say officially almost a year, which sounds a little ambiguous. So it's just over that eight month mark. And I am so excited and so just feeling really grateful to everyone that has been listening in. I cannot thank you enough. And a huge shout out to everyone who has shared episodes with friends who have left a review. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love getting those alerts on my phone. I look at it. It makes me happy. I'm seeing your name. I'm seeing the reviews. It makes me feel so fulfilled. So wanted to take a moment and say thank you. I can't wait for our year mark, which is fast approaching, faster than I thought it would be. And today I have a phenomenal woman that I'm bringing onto the show to interview. Her name is Kelly Campbell, and she's an author coach and creator of the Instant Author Blueprint. Kelly is not only an entrepreneur, but she has so much wisdom and so much feedback to bring to women that are considering monetizing a business or women that are really starting this journey in their life to step into their own power. And in addition to that, Kelly also has her own amazing manifestation stories that we're going to jump into together. So with that, let's jump in. Good morning, Kelly. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you, Bree? A beautiful day. Cannot complain. I am so excited to have you on the show today. To kick us off, I would love it if everyone gets to hear straight from you what it is exactly that you do and just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. I am an author coach. And what that means is that I work with speakers and coaches who want to write a book that specifically brands their business. So my clients want to get speaking engagements. They want to get media attention. Um, They may have products and courses that they want to market and they want a book that's in alignment with that. And that's going to help to build their authority and represent them well. So I work with them to help them produce their books because most people think they're not a writer. Yes. I feel like the two main subjects most people claim they aren't good at are math and writing. So you are doing amazing work and you speak about monetizing what you know And you also wrote a book called A Working Girl's Guide to Monetizing House. Can you talk a little bit about that experience of owning what you're an expert in, especially for the purpose of women that are looking to create their own financial autonomy? Sure. It's funny you bring up the Working Girl Guides to Rehabbing Houses because that was an accident. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And what I mean by that is I, I had a real struggle with calling myself an expert. This, this was a huge hurdle that I had to overcome. And it's part of the reason that I do the work that I do is because I think a lot of people have a hard time seeing themselves as an authority, no matter how much experience they have, how many letters they have at the end of their name. A lot of people really struggle with positioning themselves as an expert. And I had been flipping houses for right around 10 years before I wrote my book. And 
I think I flipped houses for seven or eight years before I ever had the seed in my mind to help other people do the same thing. And it r- flipping houses was so transformational for me financially. I really believed in helping women to explore taking more risks with real estate or mm-hmm. even stocks, wh- whatever it is, but taking more risks financially to grow their wealth over time and to build their own legacy financially. I really believed in that. And so what actually happened, I had been flipping houses for years. My partner at the time was a real estate agent and all of our deals went through the real estate firm. The broker in charge was a woman and she saw all of our transactions. She could see what we bought. She could see what we sold for. And after about a year, our rehabs pushed my partner to be the number one agent in that firm because all of this was going through her license. And the broker in charge said, pulled us aside one day and said, I I want you to teach this to everybody here. I want you to teach this to all of my people. And Mm. I looked at her like she had three heads, like she was a Disney character. (laughs) Um, What are you talking, teach? I'm not a guru, right? When you think about the real estate seminar leader at that time, they were mostly male. You didn't see a lot of women in that industry teaching real estate. I, I just couldn't imagine standing in the front of a room, teaching a group of people how to flip houses. It just seems <laughs> so far out of my box. And she kept, she was relentless. She wouldn't give up. And finally, she cornered me one day with a calendar, put a pen in my hand and said, pick a day. Pick a day. I want you to do this. I spent three I'm nailing days. you down. Oh, yeah. But, like, there's no, you're not getting away from me, lady. So <laughs> she <laughs> pinned me down, finally made us commit to it. I sat in a room for three days. And put together a presentation. The presentation was three hours. And at the end of the presentation, people came up to us and said things like, I spent a weekend learning real estate. I went to a real estate seminar that lasted three days. I didn't learn as much as I did with you. Mm. And I had to reconsider (laughs) my position. And so over the course of a few years, I taught real estate seminars. I primarily reached out to women because I knew I didn't see a lot of people who looked like me flipping houses. And I wanted to be that image to get people to consider just do one. If you could just flip one house, you mm-hmm. know, that's enough to send a child to school for a year. It could be enough to get a down payment for the business you really want to have. Right. So mm-hmm. I did that for a few years. And the struggle that I had was with this am I really an expert? You know, I've only done 30 houses. I haven't done a thousand houses, so I can't be an expert (laughs) because that guy over there did a thousand houses. So he's the expert, not me. Mm. And writing the book for me was in part to grow my speaking business, my seminar business for real estate, but it was more for me. It was more to show myself that I was an expert. If you can sit down and pen out 150 pages on a topic, you probably are an expert. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it was for my own sense of, of self-worth and self-value. So after I wrote the book and it became a bestseller, all of this happened in a 60-day period. Several wow. of my friends said, hey, I want to write a book. Can I, you know, would you help me write a book? And I answer yes far too often. (laughs) I'm so quick with the yes. I started coaching a couple of people privately and it grew organically. It was the most organic business I ever had. I I didn't market in the first three years. It was all referral. People saying, she can help you. She can help you. And I found that the instant author coaching was, was a calling. It was so incredibly organic. I have such a love for the people that I work with. It is my joy in addition to my child. And that is how that business grew. And I have talked so long, Brie, I do not remember your question. (laughs) (laughs) I think that you touched on so many beautiful things there. And the one thing that as you were talking, I'm just getting excited over here because it's like my passion and what keeps me up at night is giving women the confidence to go after risky things and how we do have a tendency to keep raising the bar for ourselves. Like, oh, when I get here, I'll be successful. And then you get there and you're like, oh, just kidding. It was actually here. And we keep 
<laughs> pulling up the ring on the ladder, making it harder and harder for us to reach it. And we don't let ourselves sit in the moment and celebrate those little successes along the way. And I see so many women, in I don't want to use the word inflicted because I feel like it's so negative, but that's the word that's coming to mind because it's like they're allowing their own idea about their success and their worth and their value in this world to be determined by these arbitrary metrics that we keep pushing out so that we can't reasonably hit them and then be able to call ourselves that successful person. Whereas, and I hate to make gender comparisons, but our male counterparts, they hit that first ring and they're like, man, made it. Let me go write a book. Let me go on stage about this. You know, it's just like very different attitudes. And so I love that you hit on that because it is so true. It takes us so much longer to really recognize our own value and our own worth in this world. And I really want the listeners that are tuning in to throw that shit out the window and start owning those milestones and successes earlier on and just really leaning into what are you an expert in. And I think that's really what you're talking about when you are talking about monetizing what it is that you know. And that's really what it is. Taking bold steps, taking more risks, but most importantly, recognizing that your certainty, the the only certainty that we have in life is what we know. Our story, what Mm -hmm. we have experienced, our skills, what we've learned. And if we didn't learn anything else in this pandemic, <laughs> we learned <laughs> that the, that everything can disappear overnight, right? But the one mm-hmm. thing that doesn't disappear is what you know, these skills. Okay, mm-hmm. my brick and mortar business just literally disappeared. I can't even open the doors to my clients, but I can take these same skills and I can take them online. I can take these same skills and turn it into a speaking engagement. I can take these skills and turn it into a product that I can share. Mm-hmm. I my the whole foundation of my business, whether it's the author coaching or the brand coaching, is that all of your certainty is in what you know. You can turn your knowledge into wealth. You can turn your knowledge into products. Mm-hmm. You can turn your knowledge into a gift for other people to help them duplicate the success that you had. And I really believe that. And I think that's what makes my business so organically attractive to people is that they feel that the deeper sense of purpose is, hey, what you know has value. What happened to you, your story, how awful it was, you know what, you can turn that into something that helps other people. Mm. And you touched on something just in the way that you were talking. It reminded me of something I was listening to that Wayne Dyer recorded back in the 80s. And he was talking about the idea of manifestation and how when you are able to align yourself with the creative side of you, you will always begin to live in a, a from a place that allows you to manifest the things that you want. And how that ties into what you were just talking about is you're saying, pivot, get creative, find ways to make this work for you. And I think that that ties in so beautifully with what we're going to talk about today because you're basically saying embrace that a- essence of creativity And allow that to work for you and to produce something that could be more beautiful than you ever imagined with the initial business idea anyway. Absolutely. How did you get to where you are and why are you so passionate about what you do currently? Sure. So the, you know, the real estate was something I've been, I think I've been blessed to have people plant seeds for me, to have people see things that I can do before I could see it for myself. I got introduced to real estate in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And mm-hmm. I think I talk about that book in every presentation I give because it was so <laughs> impactful. I saw it in the book. And at the end of the book, I thought about all the different ways that Robert Kiyosaki talked about building wealth for yourself. And the one that stood out to me at the age of 24 was buy a house cheap, fix it up, sell it for more. Okay, I got that. I can understand that. All the other stuff you talked about, I don't know, but this I get. <laughs> That's logical. Um, yeah. <laughs> this I get. And I asked around to see if anybody knew anyone who was rehabbing houses. And they introduced me to an investor who was kind enough to sit down with me for a day and talk to me about it. So I, I think how I got here is the one thing that I haven't had a problem doing is telling people about the things that interest me and the things that I'm passionate about. 
And the universe just seems to lead me down the path. Investing in real estate led me to the broker in charge who wanted me to teach real estate, which helped me find out, oh my goodness, this is the purpose I've been looking for my whole life. I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. Why didn't anybody (laughs) tell me? (laughs) And I discovered that. (laughs) And I discovered that I'm pretty passionate about anything that I teach. It's it's the teaching that's my gift. It's the teaching Mm -hmm. that's my purpose. And at different times in my life, based on different experiences I've had, I find I am called to teach others how to do those things. I taught real estate for a number of years. I wrote my book and I was called to teach my book. And that's one of the manifestation stories that I was going to share with you today is how I determined that I wanted to write a book. And then once I determined to write a book, somebody appeared to teach me how to do that. And the next thing I know, I'm teaching authors, which is where I believe I will stay. But you never know where the universe will take you. But I think that the reason I'm so passionate about real estate was that it was such a huge hurdle for me to take that risk and then to help others make the same leap. The reason I'm so passionate about author coaching is I struggled so hard with my sense of authority and with calling myself an expert in a world where I stood out like a sore thumb as not being a fit in my mind, I struggled so hard with that, that it's now become my passion to help others overcome that struggle. And so I would anticipate that if I have a bigger struggle (laughs) than I had with my sense of authority, I might end up teaching that one day. But I, I think my passion is helping people overcome struggles that I have experienced, struggles that I've had to work through, live through, some more painful than others. But I find that as a teacher, I I seem to be called into the space to teach what I have had to learn from my most difficult challenges. I heard somebody say, uh, Venus Opal Reese is a coach and a speaker. And I heard her say that your, your business is in your mess. (laughs) <laughs> whatever <laughs> was the biggest mess for you, the biggest challenge for you, the biggest hurdle for you, that's what you teach. And somehow that's what's happened for me organically. Mm, smart lady. I love that advice. And I think it could actually really help a lot of women that are struggling to figure out what to go into business, into the business of, or like what to niche in. And that's a great question. Who were you? What did you need at that time? So good. What would you say your biggest struggle has been? You know, I think if I had to give it a big umbrella label, it boils down to fear of success. It really comes back to those four letters, F-E-A-R, that sit in the back of our mind. Fear of being seen. Oh, my goodness. Stand Mm. on stage and talk about real estate to a bunch of realtors? (laughs) (laughs) You've got to be kidding. So I a lot of it, I think, has to do with fear of being seen, fear of what, you know, what they would have thought with regards to the real estate. And in declaring yourself an authority, I find that we are oftentimes comparing us ourselves to either an imaginary or a seen benchmark. So in my case, there was a, a real estate investor who taught rehabbing, who had done a hun- who had rehabbed 150 houses. So mm-hmm. in my mind, she defined what an expert was. I had decided that she was the benchmark for expertise. So, you know, a fear of being compared to this person who I saw as the expert. And it wasn't until one of my mentors pulled me aside And she said, why wouldn't you teach this? Why wouldn't you help women do what you've done? You know, looking at what it has done for you financially, looking at what it's made possible in your life. Why would you not teach this to someone? Why wouldn't you want to do that? And I told her my reason that, you know, I didn't, I felt like I wasn't the expert. So-and-so is the expert. And she says, well, Kelly, you don't have to flip a hundred houses to help someone who hasn't done one. Can you help someone who doesn't 
know anything? Can you help a beginner, a novice, someone who hasn't had one experience with real estate? And I thought about it and I said, well, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I can do that. You know, so I, I I think it's our perception about what's happening and a, a, a very small paradigm shift can completely change the way we look at that position, right? But overcoming that, that fear with expertise was a big one. And I would say it's a living, breathing challenge because it does come back periodically. You know, I'll see a book coach, I think it's an amazing book coach, and all of a sudden there's that comparison, so... It's an ongoing battle, but it's something that I have taken on really helping other people to overcome it because I've, I have worked with some of the most amazing experts and they're people that from the outside in, you would never imagine they had an ounce of self-doubt. But I, I think that's a struggle that many people can identify with. Yeah, it's always easy to look at someone else in either social media or whatever and just create this image in your head of all the things that they must embody that you don't have. <laughs> I love that saying that comparison is the thief of joy. It has to be one of my favorites because it's so easy to start to, like you're saying, look at someone else's success and then say, oh, well, I'm not there. So therefore, I'm not equally as successful. Instead of comparing where you're currently at, which we just spoke about, compared to where you started. And could you have helped that person that you were? And if that's the answer, then, then that's really what you should focus on, not the ladder rung that you keep putting higher and higher for yourself. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. I know that we've talked a little bit about manifestation, but I would love to ask the question. And then obviously, if you want to get into any stories, feel free, open book. Why do you so wholeheartedly believe in manifestation? And and talk about some instances where this has proven itself to you more or less. I have had some undeniable, irrefutable experiences with manifestation. You know, there are times in your life where I think you manifest and it could be considered a coincidence. It's just subtle enough that you could tell yourself that this happened just by happenstance. But I have had some experiences with manifestation that are so undeniable that I had no choice but to get on board. (laughs) That is really the truth. (laughs) I, we can definitely start with this one. I have a couple for you today. But my daughter's story was this story that really solidified that we have an, an incredible power to manifest our dreams. We, we are wholly and completely connected to the, the universe this is the language that I oftentimes use. Sometimes I, some, you'll, you will hear me interject universe, God, and Jesus <laughs> all at once because <laughs> um, it's, it's all a blend for me based on how I grew up and then what I believe to be true now. But my experience with my child just solidified my, my faith and my belief in manifestation and in there's something happening bigger than us that has connected all of us together. And so, you know, I have wanted to adopt my entire life. I can remember as far back as six years old saying, I'm going to adopt that this is, this is going to be my path to motherhood. My mother is adopted. And so I had a lot of awareness around what my Nana, what my grandmother had done for my mom in adopting her and how that changed her life and what it meant to my mom. And so I always carried around with me in the back of my mind and would oftentimes verbalize that, you know, adoption is going to be the route for me. And I remember when Angelina Jolie adopted her baby from Ethiopia, I cut out the article and I still have it because she described her experience of walking through the orphanage picking up babies until she felt a connection, until she felt that the child would receive her and could receive her as a mother. And I kept the article in my book of favorite things. I still have it today. <laughs> and I have it. Every time I talk to a friend who thinks about adopting, I send them that article because it was so well written. And so I, in my mind, I just kept saying, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Ethiopia and I'm going to go get a baby. And <laughs> this is going to be my path. <laughs> And I happened to say it over dinner one night to a friend, maybe about 
2014, 2015, just over cocktails, I, I told her that that was going to be my path. And now I fast forward years later to 2017, and I was working with one of my coaching clients, and he had recently adopted. And I was sitting in his living room recording his interview while he was holding his baby. And he would not, I mean, hours went by and he would not put this baby down. And he was so (laughs) sweet natured with her, gentle with her, soft with her. I mean, and I first met him years before. He was one of the most mechanical, robotic, all about business, ice cold individuals you have ever met. I mean... I had this transformation in him, watching him literally turn into a marshmallow in front of my eyes. I just had never seen anything like that. I'd never seen that kind of transformation happen to a person. His demeanor, his body language, everything around him changed. And I was so inspired by that when I walked outside his house. And this was first week of November, 2017. I walked outside of his house. And I was just talk, looking up at the sky, just talking to the universe. You know, God, I'm going to be a mother. Not I want to be, I'm going to be. I'm going to be a mother. And I'm not attached to how that happens. That was my language. I'm, I'm not, I don't care how that happens. I'm going to leave that up to you, but I'm going to be a mother. And I'm just standing on his lawn looking at the sky. I hope he didn't look out the window. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I drove home and not... Two weeks later, before Thanksgiving, I was at a meeting with a friend and she, the same friend I had dinner with years before. And she says, there's a child that needs a mom. I'm going to call you. And I'm, you have got to be kidding me. This, it doesn't happen this way. (laughs) This is not how that happens. And she called that same night and she says, there's a child that needs a mom. I'm going to put you in touch with her guardian at Lightum and you can go and meet her. I And I was stunned. I was in shock. So I'm just n- it's nodding my head to the phone and saying, uh-huh. Okay. Okay. And it turns out that this friend and I share an accountant. We use the same accountant. I think she referred them to me. And that accountant is a guardian at Lightum in her spare time uh, because she used to be a foster child. And so in in her spare time, she volunteers to act as a child advocate. That's what a guardian at Lightum is. They advocate Mm -hmm. for the child. They represent the child's interests. They show up for them in court. They speak for them when they can't speak for themselves. And my daughter had just lost her third mother, which is a whole nother story. But she invited me to come and meet her. And when I walked in the door, the home in which she was staying... My daughter says, mom, <laughs> from the <laughs> chair. she's sitting in the, the, the baby kitchen seat having applesauce. And she looks up and says, mom, when I came to the door and the guardian in light, him just kind of threw up her hands and said, I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> My work here is done. This is going to work out. I'm not even worried about it. You know, call me when it's up, when, when it's finished, get your foster license. Go through the process, jump through the rungs on the ladder, but this is happening. Mm -hmm. And so I sat and I played with her on the floor and I decided that this was what I was going to do. And if you haven't gathered from the earlier part of this conversation, Bria, I was, I'm a pretty hardworking person. I work almost all the time. And so when I called my mother to tell her what had happened, uh, there was absolute silence on the phone. I mean, I could hear static from... (laughs) her cell phone. She was completely (laughs) silent. And she says, I love the idea, Kelly, but I don't, I don't know how you would do it. I don't know how you would do this. Mm. My family's not here. I didn't have any help. I'm all on my own. Nobody was around. And she was concerned for me. I'm her child. So she was concerned for me. And as much as she loved the idea, she was worried about me being able to do this by myself. So I hung up my conversation with my mom and I said, well, how do people do this? Do they get a nanny? Maybe I need a nanny. And so the next day I walked around all day going, okay, I need a nanny. How do you get a nanny? Where do you find nannies? And I called some moms that I know and asked them, do you know any nannies? Have you used a nanny? 
And I spent this whole day focused on this nanny. And I get to a class that night that I wasn't supposed to be in. I was supposed to be speaking that night. And my speaking engagement was canceled. So I did what hardworking people do when their events are canceled. I found another way to work. And I went to a class. (laughs) And the woman sitting next to me in a class was a nanny. Wow. (laughs) But she wasn't any nanny. She was like the mother of all nannies. She was a nanny coach. Uh, (laughs) Wow. So she had an army of nannies. (laughs) (laughs) Universe is like, hey, you asked. Here you go. Buy the thousands. (laughs) Here you go. You've been asking me all day. Pastor me about a nanny all day long. So let me Uh, give you a nanny, please. Good for goodness sake. Pick one. (laughs) Here's somebody to help you with this. And this was early on in my business. This was really early in my business. And so I had, you know, invested a lot in the business and I wasn't 100% confident in where I was financially to do this alone. I was like, okay, now I got the nanny. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. And so I pulled up in front of my house that night. Again, I'm, I don't know why I do all of this outside, but I do all my manifesting in the yard. So I'm in front of my house and I said, <laughs> God, okay, I, I get what you want me to do here. I see it. I see the flashing lights that say, this is your baby. I'm with you. I'm following. I'm tracking with this program, but I need $10,000 if I'm going to do this. I need $10,000 in my bank account if I'm going to do this. And I don't care how it happens. I'm going to leave that up to you. And I went back and went into the house. (laughs) And within two days, I got a check from a company that I used to work for that I don't work for anymore for $8,000. And about a week later, I got a call from a woman who had been in one of my free seminars. And in that free seminar, I offered a coaching package. And she said, I couldn't do it then, but I want to do it now. But I could not, she's like, but I can't pay what you offered that package for. And I said, you know what? (laughs) (laughs) $2,000. For $2,000. Because maybe I'm supposed to do this for you because of what just happened for me. So we'll Mm -hmm. do it for 2000 And she said, done. So, you know, it was undeniable. What can you say to that? And I remember (laughs) when I had my first meeting to get my foster care license. So part of the process of manifesting, which I know you talk about, Brie, is, okay, you, you put out in the universe what it is that you're trying to manifest and a vehicle is presented to you, right? A, a way by which this can happen shows up. And so the vehicle has shown up, right? They've, okay, now, now you have to do your part, which is I need to get licensed. I got to get the fire marshal out here to approve my house. I got to fill out all this paperwork. I got to show up with the social worker. There were things that I have to do to facilitate this process. But mm-hmm. the, the means by which it could happen all showed up. So you have to be ready to, one, receive the manifestation. You've got to be ready to receive it, right? You can't run from the baby when she gets here. <laughs> <laughs> and a week was really fast, you know, but you can't run when she gets here. And then you have to do your part of the process. And in this instance, the getting my license was my part of the process. And I sat down with the the person who, who does my foster license. And he said, this usually takes 12 weeks. I said, can we do it in four? And he said, well, we can do it in <laughs> and I said, okay, because I have to get my daughter. And he said, listen, ma'am, f- you know, your daughter is a toddler in foster care. She could very well come out of the system before you finish your license. I said, no, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I said, this is, I need, I'm doing my part here. This is, this is, this is God. This is the universe that don't worry about that. I'll, you let me worry about that. Let's just get me licensed. And so we did it in six, six weeks. I got my license and my daughter was in my custody by April. And I, I remember when it all worked out, he said, I honestly, I did not think that this was going to work out the way you did. I was afraid for you. I was <laughs> afraid for how invested you were because I did not think this was going to work out, but you were right. You were right that this was meant to be because it doesn't typically go that way. But I, it was so clear to me what was supposed to happen. I just needed to do my part. I love that story. It's so phenomenal. 
And how long ago was that? You said that was four years ago? Yes, this was all 2017. And I, my, so 2017, November of 2017, that first week I met my daughter. I started the process right before Thanksgiving and I got my license in February. We started visitation and then I got custody of her in April and she hadn't been with me in my house for a week. And she goes into my closet, Brie, and she drags out this old poster that's in the back of my closet. I think it's been there since I moved to Charlotte 10 years before. And on that poster is a picture of a little girl. This poster I hung in my house, my very first house when I moved to D.C. in 2001. This was the poster that I hung in my kitchen. And I even named the poster. I named it Yellow Flower. And Yellow Flower was a picture of a little girl that just made me feel like this was a representation of the child that I was going to have one day. It was something about her. You know, she looked a little like me, a little like my mom, a little like my dad. I just love this picture of this pretty little girl. My daughter drags this picture out of my closet. I never hung it when I moved to Charlotte. I think I'd given up hope on how it was going to happen. And she says, Mm -hmm. mommy, is this me? And she's holding it in front of her. And the picture looks exactly like my daughter. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Same hair, her Uh, complexion, her cheekbones, her ears. I mean, just the most bizarre thing. I was stunned in this. I couldn't even respond. I just stared at her. She's, mommy, is this me? Is this my picture? (laughs) Oh, my God. Well, yes, dear, kind (laughs) of. Oh gosh, that that gave me chills. Honestly, I love, love, love that story. What a phenomenal visual. It was amazing to me, but that's why I say undeniable. You know, that chain of events was, the universe was showing out, you know, I mean, really, (laughs) it was, it was showing out like, okay, let me show you what we can do, you know? And it was <laughs> um, it was years of manifestation, right? Mm-hmm. You know, with the picture that I hung in my house when I was talking about this since I was very, very young. But I will tell you that on that day that I stood on my client's lawn, my conviction about it happening, my belief about it happening, I knew my certainty that this Mm -hmm. was what I wanted changed Mm. that day. It was something Mm. I talked about, like, yeah, I'm going to go to Ethiopia to get a baby. And I I met, I I had a bunch of friends in an adoption network. These are people that adopt multiple kids, seven kids, 10 kids. One had 23 kids that she adopted from Haiti. So this is an adoption network. And I would say, yes, I want to adopt one day. And they were like, we can go now. We can get you a baby. And I would recoil back like, oh, no, no, not yet. Not yet. Mm. Not right now. But that day in November, when I stood on my client's lawn, my conviction about it, my readiness had had moved to a different level. Yeah. My belief that this was going to happen, they, that the a universe got this, they got this, <laughs> was in an entirely different place. And it happened immediately after. And you know, it's amazing about that too. And it's one thing I love about manifestation is that People fail to realize that the universe is past, present, and future all at one time. We perceive things liter- or linearly, but that's not how the world works. Time is just a concept that we all live by. And so when people think about manifestation, they're like, well, how's that thing going to come to me? Because I don't, I don't know what I'm going to need it. I don't know, blah, 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 blah. You know, they try to get into the details and the nitty gritty of how something's going to work. But just like with your story, the universe was like, this is the little girl she's meant to be with. What do we need to do to back into this to get her ready? Okay, then we're going to make sure that this friend is in place. We're going to make sure that this picture is in her her arsenal years and decades before, really. We're going to make sure that this is her accountant. We're going to make sure that she just happens to have a conversation with that gentleman that day that's going to open up her heart. And that's going to be the start of this whole process for her. So it's working 20, 15, however many steps ahead to get you where you ultimately need to be. And that's the beautiful thing about manifestation is never have scarcity about, is it the right time? What details need to be worked out beforehand? Everything will align when it needs to align. And the universe can 
be operating in the future on your behalf or even in the past on your behalf. And when you're ready for it, that's when everything's going to start to unfold. That is so true. It really is. You know, and I I share this story first because I think it's the most powerful and it required the most commitment to my manifestation, to what I wanted to have in my life, to what I wanted Mm -hmm. to create. I had to, I had to be ready. <laughs> that, yeah. that was the first. <laughs> and the moment I was, all those steps that had been orchestrated ahead of time, you know, one by one all came into play. It, it was, it was amazing. And talking about it with you now as kind of reinvigorating my passion for manifestation, because I, I hadn't thought about it in a while how it all came together and that commitment had to be there. I had to be ready to receive. I had to be ready to go. But seeing how all those steps were orchestrated, she was my accountant. I had no idea that she was a guardian of life. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. over a glass of wine, I talk about how I want to adopt. And somehow she remembered, my friend remembered. All, all of those steps orchestrated over years of time all had to come together. Mm-hmm. And it's, it still amazes me and to this day. Even the the things that are harder for some people to conceptualize, like I need to do this, but financially I can't. It's okay to ask the universe, here's what I need to feel comfortable. Oh, and yeah. as a human being, these are just some some concerns I have. And if you can help me overcome these particular concerns, either whether it be financially, time-wise, whatever, or accolades even – then I will be ready and I agree to go into a contract with you in which we create something or which we do something. And it's That's amazing that the universe is like, oh, you need $10,000? Sure. Here's eight. You'll get a call. Get another two. <laughs> Good to go. <laughs> That's a really great way to put it. I had thought about it like that. That a contract with the universe, but that's absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> And I know you said you have many more manifestation stories that have really just made this whole concept undeniable to you. What are some of your other favorites? Sure. So one of my favorites, because it was so specific, one of my favorites is Andrea Bocelli. Do you know mm. who that is, Bree? Oh, hell yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> my husband's an opera singer, so like I always talk about Andrea Bocelli to him, and he's like, okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, you get one get person in this story. <laughs> Your husband <laughs> will like this story. So I was taking a class on prosperity. It was a class I signed up for based on a book by Edwin Gaines, who I love, 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 love. I love this lady. And in the class, we had to choose something to manifest as a part of the class. I was trying to decide, okay, what do I want to manifest? And my mother was watching one night, Andrea Bocelli, the PBS special that they they show periodically. (laughs) And she's on PBS and she's just there like, oh my goodness, I would love to go to this. I would love to go to this. This is so amazing. And we're just sitting there holding hands, rocking, watching Andrea Bocelli. So I decide I want Andrea Bocelli tickets. And I go to this prosperity class and they tell me about They tell me about a story of a man, and I can't remember his last name. His first name is Neville. But they tell me about his story. of He he ran out of money in New York City. He was an actor. It's during the Depression. And he needed to get back to his hometown of Bermuda. And he goes to someone who is the equivalent of a professional manifester, right? And this Mm -hmm. person says, you have to be in Bermuda. You have to imagine that you are in Bermuda all the time. And he keeps coming back to the manifesto every week. Like, it's not working. It's not working. And the guy just keeps saying, you're in Bermuda and slams the door. (laughs) So so I decide I want these Andrea Bocelli tickets and I go to class and I hear this in class and I set my intention and I write down, I go to, I go to see Andrea Bocelli and I'm wearing a red dress like pretty woman. And I just imagine myself in the opera wearing this red dress like pretty woman going to Andrea Bocelli. And I'm just. I have no idea how the universe is going to do this, but I, this is what I walk around picturing myself dressed like pretty woman at the opera with my mother and we're Mm -hmm. matching and we're going to see Andrea Bocelli and I'm listening to the radio and it's a station I would never listen to, you know, easy listening or something. Oh yeah. (laughs) And I just happened to be on that channel. It was the only one without a commercial. And then the commercial Mm -hmm. comes on and they say, Hey, we're having a radio station 
giveaway for Andrea Bocelli tickets. And you have to go on our website and enter on our website. And I said, there's my vehicle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I got to win it through this radio station. Because how, how else am I going to get these tickets? <laughs> so I said, this must be it. This must be the vehicle. So I go on the website and you can enter once a day, but you can invite your friends to enter on your behalf. Mm. And normally I would never do this, but I'm convinced that the universe has said, this is your vehicle. So you got to do this. So I contacted my friends and I'm like, Hey, will you go on this site and enter for me? I'm trying to win these tickets. And they all think I'm nuts. <laughs> nobody wins these things, Kelly. People don't, you know, mm-hmm. nobody wins these things on the ticket. They just want all our email addresses. And I said, well, unsubscribe after you do it, but can you opt in for me? And they opt in. And I think I was having a crappy day one day. And I'm driving around <laughs> and it's a week before the show. And I check my voicemail and it's the radio station. And they're saying, hey, mm. you won the Andrea Bocelli ticket. <laughs> So I go pick them up and I take a picture and I text the picture of the ticket to all my friends. And so I have that saved on a poster. I have a picture mm. of my daughter and a picture of my Andrea Bocelli ticket. So whenever <laughs> I think I can't manifest something, <laughs> I could look at that picture and say, no, you manif- you manifested Andrea Bocelli tickets like out of the air. <laughs> so- yes. The phrase that keeps running through my mind right now is like, ask and you shall receive. You got to be on the lookout for that vehicle because that that's oftentimes we miss those signs of what it is that we're supposed to do. It's like that that story. And I can't remember exactly who told it, but they were like a woman stayed back during a hurricane and people were like, hey, we got to go uh, get in the car. We're going to we got to evacuate. She's like, no, God will save me. And then two days later, someone comes by with like a fire truck. Hey, we got to go. You're, we're trying to evacuate you. And they're like, no, God will save me. Third day, lifeboat comes around. Hey, you're on the roof. We got to evacuate you. Get in the boat. Come on. We got to go. God will save me. Fourth day, that person drowns. And then they go up to heaven. They're like, I don't understand what happened. And God's like, I sent you a truck, a fire truck, a boat. You didn't take any of those vehicles. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like sometimes we're like, oh, don't worry, like the universe is going to manifest for me. But the universe, while it is pure energy, the world we operate in is not necessarily, I mean, it is pure energy, but these things have combined to four physical substances. And our minds are limited in the way that we have been trained and need to see things manifest physically. Even though we can believe that it happens on an energetic level, our subconscious brains still want to see these things happen in a more physical manner. So even though you might believe that the universe is going to give you something energetically, it's going to show up in a physical way via some sort of vehicle, an ad on the radio station, a billboard. For me, it was, I've seen license plates that have given me messages. I mean, you just, you <laughs> never know. How does manifestation play a role now in, in your career and with your work and all the success you're having there? Well, I, you know, I think it's the key to bringing the right people at the right time. So I'll, I oftentimes find that my clients are the answer to some of my manifestation requests. Mm-hmm. I've been, my, my latest challenge with my business is figuring out where I want to put my marketing dollars right now in terms of the ad space. So where, where do I want to invest? Where do I want to put my marketing dollars? And then I have a client I'm coaching right now who his big focus is zero dollars to ad spend. And he's helped create six and seven figure personal trainers with zero dollar ad spend. So he's kind of showing up with a new vehicle for me, right? If I'm really struggling with where to put my dollars, but I'm sitting here recording an interview with somebody that's explaining how do you build, continue to build your audience with zero dollar ad spend. He's He's kind of undeniably answering my question and my request, right? (laughs) I'm asking, okay, how do I do this with marketing? Where should I put my dollars? The universe answered zero, zero, (laughs) build organically, (laughs) you know? So I find that manifestation also oftentimes will bring people into my space with either the answers or a service that I'm in need of. Um, but it's the people that seem to play a big role in bringing those manifestations to fruition. 
And if anybody is listening and you're kind of in the in-between, like there's something that you're trying to manifest, but you're not sure what to do while you're hanging out, waiting on your manifestation, (laughs) the space that I'm in right now is to do everything I possibly can to keep my vibration high, to keep my energy Mm. high, to keep the, the energy around me high and attractive and beautiful and loving so that I can attract these people into my space who are energetic and beautiful and loving. And then mm-hmm. when the time comes, we're connected to them when in some way we can be of service to each other. And so that's been my in the in between activity is just always trying to keep that vibration high, that gratitude high, so that I can continue to attract not just what I'm manifesting, because I could be manifesting now something I asked for 20 years ago, as in the case with my daughter. Um, <laughs> I, I could still, those, those could still be on the way, right? When I'm ready to receive them so that I can be who I need to be to be a part of somebody else's manifestation. And the phrase I always use in my business is, you know, I, I want to be an accomplice in your story. So I'm always trying to keep my energy high to be that beautiful person for somebody else and to attract those amazing energetic people into my space who Mm. you just don't know where down the line they could play a pivotal role in your story. Mm. Love that. I really appreciate our conversation today. For those that are interested in connecting with you more meaningfully, whether it be for your courses on helping people become authors or if they have any questions based on other things that we've talked about today, where can people go to find you? Oh, absolutely. So you can find me at coachkellycampbell.com. That's my website. And you can go there and you can find out about all the things that I'm doing and you can connect with me on that site, very transparent on how to connect with me there. And I, of course, welcome visitors, welcome visitors. I love hearing about stories. I love hearing about what a lot of um, my visitors are working on. You can you can tell me a story. I will sit and listen with my hands on my chin. I just love hearing stories. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so if you're an amazing visual, absolutely. If you're working on something, you want to talk about it, I will listen. Um, and then you can also reach me at Coach Kelly Campbell on Instagram. That's the social media space I show up in the most often. So I'm always happy to connect with people there as well. Perfect. And I will get all of these links and put them in the show notes. That way, if anyone does want to connect, you can head over there and click on it and be directed to her website, her Instagram, and any other way that you might want to connect. Absolutely. It's all the same across the board. Facebook, Instagram, (laughs) Coach Kelly Campbell. (laughs) Well, thank you so much, Kelly, for joining us. And I look forward to connecting again. Thank you, Bree. Thank you for the opportunity to share with your audience. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. I will include all of Kelly's links in the show notes. If you enjoyed this interview and this topic, head over to the podcast and hit subscribe. That way you are always updated when new episodes are released. Have a fantastic rest of your week, and I will catch y'all next Monday. Until then, go out there and manifest some miracles. Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me today. If you enjoyed this podcast, hit subscribe so you can stay up to date with new episodes. As always, we would love it if you would share this episode with friends and family who could use the inspiration. As a new podcast show, we would really appreciate your honest feedback so I know what you like and what you could use more of. As a thank you for leaving us a rating, we will send you our seven weekly tips to create space for abundance. Make sure you screenshot your review and email it to us at hello at the T-H-E modern manifestation.com so we can send them straight to your inbox. If you'd like to stay connected, you can find us on Instagram or Facebook at Modern Manifestation, or you can head to our website at themodernmanifestation.com. Thanks again for joining me, and I will catch y'all in the next episode.